For a team as limited and mm, challenged as Selber was in 2017, they did a fairly solid job. When I say challenged, I do mean it. Financially, structurally, competitively and so on. It was a difficult season for the little underdogs from Hinwil, which makes their achievements as few as they were this year that much more noteworthy. Let's see what's what. I'm Chip from the Digital Grandstand and here are the highs and lows that Sauber went through in the F1 2017 season. The team started 2017 with year-old Ferrari power units, which was a huge low. Their driver lineup was mediocre, at best. The Mercedes-backed Pascal Verlein was a strong addition to the team, but Marcus Ericsson was not really a proven quantity. This was like pairing a bottle of Guinness beer with ordinary fish and chips, and call that a lunch. Overall, another low. Speaking of the lineup, in the days before the first test in Barcelona, Verlein had a nasty accident at the Race of Champions. He missed the first week of preseason testing and subsequently the first two races of 2017. Low. However, the first high came packaged with Pascal's replacement, the Ferrari-backed Antonio Giovinazzi. He wasn't by any means going to create miracles for the team, but all in all, Antonio had a solid first race in Australia. Not so much two weeks later in China, when he crashed in both quali and the actual race. And that's another low. In Bahrain, Verlein was back in his driving seat and had a relatively good race. Finishing ahead of a Renault and a Toro Rosso just outside the points, this surely was a high for Sauber. But perhaps the biggest high for the team came two races later, in Spain. Pascal was again the man responsible by driving the wheels of his car and not only finishing in the points, but in freaking P8. Amidst all the chaos in Azerbaijan, Verlein managed to score a point yet again. Not only that, but Ericsson was right behind him in P11. This could have proved an even more fruitious race for them, but a solid high nonetheless. But that's as good as it got for the team. As the other cars evolved and developed, the Sauber C36 remained more or less stagnant. Just days before the race in Baku, it was announced that team principal Monisha Kettleborn would step down from her role. And I was very torn between calling this a low or a high. Monisha was the first ever female team principal and a genuine role model for so many women looking to get into Formula 1 in any position possible. However, her replacement was ex renault and Junior Formula's team principal, Frederick Vasseur. A wise old head that steered teams like Art Grand Prix and racers like Valtteri Bottas and Esteban Ocon to title glory. So, taking all into account, I have to say him replacing Monisha was a high for Sauber. As the 2017 season was coming to a close, there was a major high for the team in the form of a new deal with Ferrari. From 2018, not only would Sauber have the up-to-date Ferrari power units, but also this deal paved the way for Alfa Romeo to get back to Formula 1. Sort of. The small Fiat-owned car manufacturer from Italy would act as the main sponsor for Sauber for at least the next three years. To top it all off, Ferrari Academy graduate and reigning Formula 2 champion Charles Leclerc would also drive next year in Formula 1 for Sauber. That's a high, high, high. Three times high. The Star Wars original trilogy right there. If there is a low from this whole situation and this being Formula 1, there always is, is that Leclerc will replace Verline. Ericsson is much too tightly linked with Sauber's Longbow Finances sponsors to be dropped. As always, I guess, money talks in Formula 1. And that's pretty much how Sauber's Formula 1 2017 campaign unfolded. Did I miss any major point out? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more F1 related content. Thank you ever so much for watching. I've been Chip from the Digital Grandstand. You can find me on social media. You have the links in the description. And I'll chat to you again very soon.